Energy Foundation continues to assist family members of those on MH370 and the rescue team searching for the missing Jen. We go to the Yuli Tsuji Hospital in Taiwan to see how staff members are celebrating the 15th anniversary of the hospital. Welcome to Da Headlines. I'm Helen Now. Thank you for joining us. First up in Malaysia, Tima doctors recently provided traditional Chinese medicine services to family members of the passenger on board the missing flight MH370, as well as crew members of Malaysia Airlines. But first, let's go to Kelantan's Tok Bali, where city volunteers visited rescue personnel with snacks to show their support. <laughs> Knowing that many rescue personnel have been working around the clock, Kilanchan Tsuji volunteers arrive at Tok Bali with desserts and drinks to show their support. We decided to buy some desserts and drinks for them because they are working very hard. Upon receiving the snacks from the volunteers, these Coast Guard staff break into smiles because Tsuji Foundation is the first organizations to arrive with such love and support. Ah, tidak ada. We are not tired at all because this is our duty and we feel very bad for the family members of the missing passengers. We will continue to look for the missing jet. We want to thank Tsuji for providing us with these desserts and the drinks. Their gestures give us the strength to continue with the search. We are very thankful. It has been days and no charity organization has come to visit us. Siji Foundation is the first organization that came to visit us with snacks and support. The rescue personnel also seized the chance to give the volunteers a tour of the rescue ships. We will be conducting the search for about five days. However, we will stop if we encounter some problems and act according to the orders given to us by our superiors. Yeah. Although the weather around Tok Bali has been unstable, these ships will nevertheless continue their search for the missing Malaysia Airlines flight. Meanwhile, in Putrajaya, Tsuji volunteers offer traditional Chinese medicine services at a hotel for family members of passengers on board the missing plane. <laughs> Other than family members, crew members of Malaysia Airlines also arrive to receive treatment, such as acupuncture, Chinese manipulative therapy, and much more. <laughs> Many patients suffer from pressure-related problems, such as insomnia or shoulder pain. This is seen in Malaysia Airlines crew Sanaran Ayu, who has been under tremendous pressure following the incident. Thanks to treatment she received today, she feels a bit more at ease. I've always been afraid of acupuncture, needles poking here and there, you know. But uh, they said, try, why not try since you're here? And I not try, and I tried, and I feel very good. I feel very relaxed. Our patients feel more at ease when they realize that it is not that painful after the first needle poke. They can sit with us and rest for 30 minutes. It is a good chance for them to relax. Although unable to lessen the family members' worries, Tima doctors have given many the strength to face the trials ahead. In our next report, we'll meet city volunteer Ren Haiwen, who has more than 20 years of experience in the media field. Ren said he used to think of casualty and death just as numbers. However, after walking the city path, he repented for his way of thinking. Following the recent missing jet incident, Ren took days off from work to use his expertise to record city's footsteps. Shedding tears of sadness while chanting the Buddhist scripture, this is former news anchor Ren Haiwen, who has more than 20 years of experience in the media and was once a newspaper journalist. When I was still a reporter, I always thought that an incident should not be in the headlines if it didn't cause a lot of casualty or death, vice versa. When an incident causes a lot of casualty or death, it should definitely be reported. After walking the city path, especially after the recent missing jet incident, I realized that I need to repent for my way of thinking. Now an advertising company manager, Zheng Haiwen, also sees the opportunity to join the Buddhist NGO. Following the missing Malaysia plane incident, Ren decided to take a week off from work to volunteer. 
When others hurt, I ache. When others suffer, I grieve. This is supposed to be the right attitude that all of us should have. When I came in here, I saw many reporters fighting for spots to get further updates. They reminded me of my past self. I'm so glad that I'm no longer in the media field and am a happy to volunteer. As a former journalist, Ren uses his expertise to record and deliver Tsuji's footsteps in helping family members. Thanks to his dedication, other volunteers can better coordinate and provide family members with much-needed assistance. In Myanmar, a community in Sen Township experienced a fire last week, which destroyed 16 houses and left 26 families homeless. Luckily, no casualties were reported. Upon learning of the news, city volunteers quickly packed boxes of relief items before distributing them to the fire survivors. In this community of Insane Township, a blaze has destroyed many houses, leaving 26 families without roofs over their heads. The fire was really big, so all our belongings were destroyed. We didn't have time to salvage anything, and all I have are the clothes I'm wearing now. Though what were once their beautiful homes has been turned into debris and ashes, residents still try to salvage whatever they can. These are my children's clothes. Unwilling to see these residents in hardship, city volunteers quickly mobilized to pack boxes of daily necessities and hand them out at the temporary shelter which these families are staying. Seeing the arrival of these volunteers, a student who is in the middle of her university entrance exams burst in tears. I just feel like crying now. The love and warmth brought by city volunteers helped those these terrified souls, and residents know they are not alone on the path to recovery with city by their side. In Taiwan, 447 entrepreneurs from seven countries worldwide arrived at the Hualien Jingsi Hall for the annual Tsuji Global Entrepreneur Seminar. Despite their busy work schedule, these businessmen nevertheless set aside their time and committed themselves to the three-day seminar. Using this platform, we hope that our technology can thrive to make a positive difference in society and our world. It was only after hearing the talk presented by the guest speaker that Chen Huirong, an entrepreneur from Cambodia, realized that recyclable items are useful in so many ways. I never knew that these scarves are actually made from the bottled water we drink. They are made from recycled materials, so they are extremely precious. With a vision to promote recycling back home, Chinese entrepreneur Yang Yuanyong decided to offer his old factory up as a recycling station. I have an old factory which I no longer use. Once I have cleared everything out, I will talk to the village head to see if we can set up a recycling station there. Meanwhile, some trainees are safeguarding the planet in their own way. In the past, I ate one vegetarian meal a week, but since attending the seminar, I want to respond to Mr. Zhen Yen's call, and I have decided to eat three vegetarian meals a week now. Not only did the seminar help attendees recharge spiritually, the tours of various city missions also opened their eyes to a different style of management. Since I joined Sidi, especially after taking part in the winter relief distributions, I feel that we should carry a heart of gratitude. The success of my company is all attributed to the hard work of my staff. Sidi donates the contributions they receive to help those in need. I would also like to call on some of my friends to donate to Sidi. They will be at peace knowing that their money is being used to help the less fortunate. It is hoped that once these entrepreneurs go back home, they will incorporate what they have learned into the workplace to bring forth more warmth and love. After a successful three-day training seminar at the Hualien Jingsi Hall, the 447 entrepreneurs from seven countries exchanged thoughts and discussed the value and purpose of life. Master Zheng Yan arrived at the closing ceremony to extend her well wishes and encourage these entrepreneurs to work together to improve the well-being of society and to make a difference in this world. 
moving to the United States, Suji volunteered she slid out, succumbed to illness, and passed away on February 21st. On March 13, a memorial service was held for she, in which more than 400 volunteers from across the country came to pay their tribute and extend their blessings to the beloved volunteer. May Brother Sidao rest in peace. We hope he will return quickly to this world as a Bodhisattva that will relieve suffering and bring joy to this earth. Suji volunteer Shi Si Dao passed away from illness in February of this year. More than 500 of his relatives, friends and fellow Suji volunteers from across the country gathered at his memorial service in California to bid their final farewell to the beloved volunteer. I want you to remember his good thoughts, good words, good memories have for all your life and forever. Brother Xi was like an elder brother to us. Although we are very sad he is no longer with us, but I know Brother Xi will live on in our hearts forever. He will always be the kind and loving brother whose example we should take after. During his time as a Tsuji volunteer, she was tasked with the training of new volunteers, which allowed him to cast a wide net of affinities across the United States. Recollecting Xi's kindness and compassion, many could not hold back their tears. Brother Xi will always be the brother Xi in my heart. Deeply saddened over the loss of a beloved volunteer, members of the Tsuji family offer their sincerest blessings recognizing that Xi's life was an example for others to follow. He was a very peaceful person. We've never saw him lose his temper or get angry. So I'm here today to express my gratitude to him for setting such an exemplary example. There are so many brothers and sisters that love him. We should carry on the spirit and love those around us. Recently, Yuli Tsuji Hospital celebrated its 15th anniversary. Over the past 15 years, the Yuli Tsuji Hospital has remained steadfast in its missions to safeguard the health of residents living around southern Hualien and will continue to be a beacon of light in providing medical services to the local community in the years ahead. In Hualien at the 15th birthday celebration of Yuli Tsuji Hospital, eight staff members were honored for their 15 years of service. I believe the calling our medical staff to safeguard residents in remote regions is strong. With their sense of mission, I know we can continue to protect residents here. Performing a sign language song, staff members are united in both their movements and mission to continue safeguarding the health of local residents here in southern Hualien. Over the past 15 years, Yuli Tsuji Hospital has looked after the health of our local residents. Good medical care was what we needed. Participants of Yuli's Fu Qi Station for Senior Citizens also performed for the audience. Fu Qi Station is a program run by Yuli Tsuji Hospital that encourages the elderly to get out of the house and interact with others. By saving lives and safeguarding good health, Yuli Tsuji Hospital has always been there for local residents.
Spain and Taiwan, the Guanshan Tsuji Hospital is celebrating its 14th birthday this year. Besides curing patient sickness at the hospital, doctors also provide medical services in remote areas on a regular basis. Here's more. Wednesday morning, Guansan City Hospital's Chinese Medicine Department will pack up their medical equipment and head out for their mobile clinic. Guanshan is a remote area, but Luye is even more so. Over there, they don't have a Chinese medicine clinic or a hospital. In August of 2011, Guansan City Hospital established a Chinese medicine department. Then in April of the following year, the medical team began heading into the community to bring medical care. We came up with this idea to help those who are unable to leave their homes. It's for us to approach the patients, not the other way around. Even before the doctors arrive, seniors are already waiting to be seen. Working together, the staff members quickly set up their clinic and are soon ready to see the first patient of the day. Hi, long time no see. How are you lately? A stroke hindered Mr. Wu's left arm, but the arm's range of motion has improved since Mr. Wu started receiving acupuncture treatment last year. Let's try to raise the arm. A little bit more? A bit higher? It's easier to raise your arm now, right? Does your leg feel numb? Also feeling the benefits of acupuncture is Mr. Wu's brother, whose left leg was crushed by a car, leaving him with chronic numbness and soreness. The weekly acupuncture session have brought much improvement. It's terrific to have you here. The service you provide is great. It has helped to relieve my pain. After the third session, I really feel that my pain has subsided. Now, relax the leg. Local residents are thankful and recognize the burden doctors carry in holding these clinics. It's very convenient for us, but it's harder on the doctors. Much of the younger generation in Taidong's Luye Township have left to seek better opportunities elsewhere. Thankfully, Guansan Tsuji Hospital is here to safeguard the health of the aging residents left behind. Many are injuries from years of hard labor, like stiff shoulders. We see a lot of problems with soreness. Besides acupuncture, prescriptions are also given out on site. Their clinic makes it a point to use environmentally friendly recycled bottles. The first year, we asked the patients to go to the hospital to fill their prescriptions, but then everyone suggested it's more convenient for them to fill their prescriptions on site after their treatment. Without the need for expensive equipment, Guansan Tsuji Hospital's Chinese medicine doctor provide a comprehensive service to safeguard the health of local residents. In Malaysia, the Tsuji Malacca chapter joined the initiative to watch Master Jing in Wisdom at John broadcast last August and have since had over 10,000 volunteers from 14 various locations join the morning study group. Tsuji volunteers are agreed that through absorbing and taking the Dharma to heart, they have gained the wisdom needed to better promote the organization's work. <coughs> Before sunrise each morning, city volunteers in Malacca are already up and listening to Master Zhen Yin's teachings. The city Malacca chapter began promoting the initiative to watch the Master's program last August and has since inspired over 15,000 volunteers in 14 various locations to join. I think this morning's study group is a source of spiritual sustenance that I need each day, just like how we eat three meals a day. It's difficult to go through a day without absorbing the Dharma. I feel that I have always been nervous when speaking to others, but that changed after I joined the program. Taking the Master's Dharma to heart has helped these volunteers better carry out Tsuji's work, especially for the community members in each community. While absorbing the Dharma, you will naturally gain confidence and determination, which becomes a great strength in pushing us forward to promote Tsuji's missions. When we are organizing an event or working towards something, volunteers now share similar direction and understanding in promoting the organization's philosophy. 
Tsiji volunteers know well that they must practice Tsiji's ideals in their daily lives before inspiring others to follow suit. Also joining the initiative to watch Master Jingen's Wisdom of Dawn broadcast is Tsiji volunteer Ling Yuquan in Brisbane, Australia. Though unable to watch the program and the same day it is broadcast, we watch a rerun of the program from the day before with complete English subtitles has given Ling the wisdom to share the Master's Dharma with her local members. Come 5 a.m. in Brisbane, while most are still asleep, the light is already switched on in this family's home. Uh, Getting up to watch the Master's broadcast shouldn't be a difficult thing for us, because we overseas volunteers are so far away and want to seize every opportunity to spend time with the Master. As Australia is two hours ahead of Taiwan, Tsiji volunteer Ling Yu Kuan isn't able to join Hua Lian's Jinsa Bodeval video conference on the same day, but watches the program from the day before on her tablet computer each morning. Sometimes I am in charge of food distribution, and I also have a few local members here, so I have to absorb the Dharma first in order to share the Master's wisdom with them. Not wanting to disturb her family, Ling sometimes uses earphones to keep the noise down. Ling says listening to the master's words every morning helps her take the Dharma to heart. Uh, the greatest change is that I now continually remind myself to be moderate in my speech and behavior. Before, I used to be quite stubborn. Starting from herself, Ling Yuquan hopes to further spread Siji's love and wisdom to those around her. Recently, the 2014 Eco Products International Fair was held in Taiwan, which saw exhibitors from 15 countries attempting to showcase their green products. Among them was the Tsiji Foundation, which not only promoted Tsiji's recycling message to fair goers, but also its signature eco friendly products. As Tsuji volunteers explain the making of a homemade cleaning agent, fair goers gather around the Tsuji booth to listen. After I finish work at 9 p.m., I will go to the recycling point to sort recyclables, bags after bags. Sharing her recycling experience with the audience members is Tsiji volunteer Chen Atao. Here at the 2014 Eco Products International Fair, the Tsiji Foundation displayed its green products and promoted its worldwide recycling missions to fair goers. I hope to learn more about Tsiji's recycling practices so that I can put them into my designs to make our world a better place. One of the exhibitors showcased bags that will not only dissolve in 80 degrees water, but also become food for chickens and shrimps. In fact, these green bags are made from the starch extraction of cassava and corn. You can even simple burn it, there won't even any molten product, uh, which is going to give you just a normal charcoal ash and there's no smell to it, there's no toxic to it. After ironing, the bag still keeps its texture and flexibility. At this international fair, exhibitors from 15 countries have come together in order to teach the public how to make our Earth a cleaner place. We go to China at the end of the show. Although it has been two weeks since the violence attack at the Kunming Railway Station in Yunnan Province, Tsiji volunteers have continued to provide comfort and support to those staying at the hospital. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Die Headlines. Goodbye.